Yeah, I'm putting this on the 13th of June, I think. Who knows? So you got the garden to start off. Okay, let go of court and replace that energy with the seven of swords. I'm gonna do it like this. So, first thing I got was anxious sweet. So I feel like it's somebody or some somebody you shouldn't be sweet on. Or somebody's pretending to be sweet to your face, but you know they're a sneaky ass lying ass bitch. Hold on. The Emperor is here. Or it's something that you really have a problem with, but you're not saying nothing about it. It's telling you to stop doing that. Like, you're acting like everything is okay in the situation, but it's not. Stop. But, um, I'm going to clarify why the lovers is here for something you need to let go of, but it's courting right here. I feel like you successfully completed this cycle, old cycle that you ran. Hold on, why is courting here? Jezebel pretending to be a high priestess. New money. Unique beauty is intimidated. Intimidating. So somebody might have let somebody intimidate them away from a choice or from a, away from a love situation. I feel like it's a Jezebel pretending to be a spiritualist who is confusing you or a lover or about you, about you. They confuse people for money because they are Jezebel. Or they abuse, they confuse people on purpose because that's what Jezebels do. They like to destroy God's people. So you know they like to destroy unions, whether it's marriages or um, twin flame soulmate relationships. They love to do whatever they can to destroy it. Because that's what Jezebel's do. A Jezebel spirit could be male or female. Um, but in this case, this Jezebel did it for money and for the um, spiritual satisfaction of um, destroying a divine union or a divine person. Um, they did this because unique beauty is intimidating. But I feel like it's telling you to let that go because let go of the control that a person was able to have over you through manipulation this could be through sex light born from darkness it's somebody pretending like yeah i used to be evil and wicked or i used to do whatever the fuck but now i'm light but no they're not they're jezebel hope quit talking about me to your man because that only make him more intrigued okay this is somebody who was talking about you to your person or they were trying to <laughs> To make your person believe that you are somebody who you're not. Lost without you. This person would be lost without you, which makes me feel like they follow you. Somebody got the right idea wrong, bitch. Okay, I'm going to clarify with the cards now. Why is it telling you to let go of those, that lover's energy and that other shit? Okay, it's a joke. I feel like it could be somebody who does all this shit that you might take too seriously. The other magician is here. I feel like they're weak. Um, you outrank them in every way. And I feel like the only thing that makes you take this person seriously is because they're able to affect your personal life or they was able to affect your money or like they was able to pay a person or people to do some weird shit to you or what else? What came out? They were able to block your money or something. Or steal from you in a way. With new money coming out. But they're not the end all be all. That's why I said let them let that go because they really don't have control over something. I feel like they know that. That's why they try to control a narrative or control the way a person or people sees you or use money to manipulate situations 
or pay people to pay people to do weird shit. The guardian, not the guardian, the garden. Why is the garden representing the viewer? The page of wands. So you could be Sag, Leo, Aries. I feel like you ended a cycle, or you are currently ending a cycle of being obedient to people you should not be obedient to, or respecting a person or people who you should not respect. I also feel like you healed yourself in a past cycle. You could have been loyal to a person or a thing that was breaking you on purpose. You ended that cycle and just started focusing on the things that you can't control. Okay. Let that go. We already went over that. Replace that energy with the seven of swords reversed. So it's talking about telling the truth openly, but never mistaking the truth that was exposed as a person having power over you, bro. The nine of wands. It's talking about not giving up. That's my don't give up card. I started hearing don't give up by gonna. But anyway, she has, it's saying you have spiritual protection and you have physical protection, but it's telling you to use it. Like having this don't mean shit if you don't use it. Because the ancestors are behind this lady waiting for her to make the first move so they can back her up. But you have to make the first move. Like, I don't know what that means to you. But, uh, but um, yeah, you don't have to do something alone, but you have to ask for assistance. You have to be clear about what it is that you want and stop carrying a burden or multiple burdens by yourself that you actually don't have to carry by yourself, according to what the cards is talking about. Okay, and it's saying putting more energy and effort and attention into what you want than what you don't want. For others, it could be telling you to expose the way a person has been attacking you, abusing you, or burdening you on purpose. Expose it to a, a person of people who matter. Like, you got justice here. That could be talking about literally the justice system or it could be talking about i mean i feel like you would know if it's your reader currently affecting you is in the nine of cups and the two of swords you could be confused about what you want the eight of wands you could have recently got some communication or some mail or email or something or phone call where it sounds good, but you don't know if you believe it yet or you don't know if you want to do it or be a part of it. Justice. Oh, color one. Why is the Eight of Swords? That's not the Eight of Swords. That's the Eight of Wands and then the Mother of Swords. Hmm. So you could be acting like you don't want something, but you do. But I feel like you're studying and analyzing so you can make the right decision. Justice is here. So you're not rushing into something that has been made available to you or will be. And I feel like it already has been. So justice is here. That's the fair thing to do. <laughs> Weighing something up. So I feel like you're being smart. Okay. You could be consulting with spirit about whether or not you should take an offer whether or not you should choose a certain path whether or not you should accept the invitation or something i feel like you are really focused on yourself and your spiritual growth at this time i also feel like somebody's psychic abilities or spiritual gifts are increasing I feel like you have very unique gifts. Might be hard to put in words, but it is useful for you in your life in ways you can't explain or it pays off for you in your life in ways you can't even explain, but you witness it. But coming towards you as the emperor, so that is either you being a boss or you coming together with a boss or... This could be a divine masculine you're coming together with, or you could be the divine masculine coming together with this mother of coins. I feel as though you both have, you both have a leader mentality, 
you both have this unfuckwittable type of vibe about you, John Horace. You both have healing abilities as well. You and this person you're coming together with. Temperance here. That's reconciliation. That's Sagittarius energy. It's also Aries here. King of Swords. Two of Pentacles. So you and the person are healing something. And y'all are having conversations about changes that you can make and they can make to make something more stable make something go better and i feel like the tables are turning in both of y'all favor together aunt caroline is the will of fortune that's good luck good fortune destined and faded positive outcomes for the person who i'm reading for and um this could be in a business in a relationship or both but something has been a long time coming. That's what I'm getting when I'm looking at temperance, patience, and then the father of knives and then two of pentacles, four of wands, the will of fortune. But it, it's been a long time coming, but it's coming. It's the point. The eight of wands is here with the two of wands. It's telling somebody to never stop speaking their truth, to speak up because something needs to be heard. Something needs to be heard. Or something needs to be done that only you can say. Maybe you're the only one who sees it right now. Or the other people who do are not using their voice. Only you can say it. Or only you see it or something. Something that needs to be said and done just by you. The ball has been put in your court by spirit. The lightning ball hit this tree and made a big ass crack in it. So I just feel like that's spirit. Right, putting the ball in your court it could be when it comes to this family or when it comes to a business I got a bird but I don't want to because I feel like it's going to be like a man like I don't know it was weak <laughs> excuse me now but the ball has been put in your court that if you take it and follow the path that it's been laid out in front of you <laughs> Whoever I'm reading for it's been laid out in front of you. Miss Ida is right here. That's the high priestess. Um, then it's leading to the Ten of Pentacles energy. So that's not only a lot of money, but that's a lot of love and support. Um, not only in this world, but I feel like it's like from your ancestors, your spiritual team as well. So, girl, I don't know. Or oh, sir, my bad. Um, spirit guide and angel of love somebody spirit guides is, is proud of them and appreciates them listening to them and or um, being a voice for them or something or getting their message across the angel of love I feel like this reading is for somebody who is a lover, of course. My readings be for the lovers. <laughs> the Oracle wait for important information. Then Magic Guardian. Unlock the magic within. And at the bottom is magic. So I'm talking to a real magical <laughs> individual, apparently. And it's telling you to follow where spirit is leading you. It's leading you down a path that's either leading to love or starts and ends with love. Like, And keep in mind, if you see something, hear something, I don't say it. Go with your own intuition before mine. I want to read an oracle message, but I don't, hold on. But it says, Beatitude of Sacred Rapture. I got to get the book out the closet right there. Hold on. Okay. 
Okay, number 29. Let your true self be seen. Why? Uh, the internet is a weird place. I don't really like it. But, okay. Let your true self be seen. Search for it. They don't have to mean it on the internet, though. I feel like it's something that... Some magic that's telling you to unlock, too. Like, in general, like, in your life. But let your true self be seen. Search for deeper spiritual purpose and opportunity for healing beneath conflict and suffering. If you have been in pain, this oracle brings a message of joyful breakthroughs. Your soul is growing stronger, more able to have faith and wisdom than in judgment or doubt. Didn't that come out for the first card being the ending of a cycle? Of Okay, let me keep reading. Your soul is growing stronger and more able to have faith in the wisdom than in judgment or doubt. Commit to your spiritual path and know you are making progress, even if things seem more difficult for a time. Know that any such difficulty is a part of your healing and that you will successfully move through it. Trust yourself. This is a lie. I need to drink some water. Okay. It says, to feel that you are feeling... Oh, no, ma'am. To feel that you are fully seen, loved, and recognized for who you are, honors your true self. To be witnessed in such a state... Truly be held in all your uniqueness, quirkiness, vulnerability, and strength is deeply empowering. This is how spirit sees you. So when you connect with spirit, you learn to love yourself and others unconditionally and become generous with your forgiveness. You are also less likely to be hoodwinked by ego. You start to see yourself and others at a soul level. Where we are beheld, the need to behold arises. We need to bear witness to the sacred to acknowledge what is true, which means cutting through the fog of illusion, deception, and confusion with the clarifying knife of a higher perception. There is a quantum power in pure vision, and it empowers the viewer and also that which is viewed. Seen from a position of inner spiritual truth, we look below the surface, which has the alchemical potential to set healing in motion. What vision of yourself or others do you either cling to or free yourself from? How might your choice either encourage or impede soul awakening? When life is tough, you can admire the courage it takes to grow. There's a compliment in her in being allotted life's challenges. If something big has shown up on your path, then the universe is basically saying, that they are enough of a spiritual badass to deal with it. It's a vote of divine confidence. If you or another are battling something, you can choose to feel awe and respect rather than fear and despair. Rapture is a state of intensely pleasurable joy that lifts one into communion with the sublime and the sacred. It is not only a personal experience, but also a transfusion of divine light into the collective soul of humanity. This is the kind of joy that is generous, soulful, without reason or agenda, and delightfully contagious. It is a wake-up call. It's just any stubborn clinging to negativity. It refreshes the soul and nourishes the heart. It reminds us that everything is okay. Rapture is the astonishment the sudden intake of breath in response to an inner realization of something beautiful and beyond description. Sorry, I keep laughing. Like, I'm Sagittarius Sun, Sagittarius Mercury. It should be funny to me. That other people don't be thinking it's funny, but it's still funny. I don't care. It And, never mind. It tears us out of our misery and despair and plugs us into an electric current of enlightenment. The darkness is cleared in an instant. Beatitude is a blessing, the highest blessing. The oracle of beatitude of sacred rapture 
brings God is that the beautiful healing truth of spirit is your reality. All else is a nightmarish misuse of imagination by ego. <laughs> okay. When you sense spirit at work in your life, totally trustworthy and having your back, you are seen clearly. When your hopeful heart feels empowered, you are in a zone of truth. Trust in those moments, okay? Recall them whenever you can. Count all your positive moments and wins, no matter how inconsequential they may appear. Every one of them is a precious drop of divine nectar nurturing your heart. Allow yourself to see and be seen. Okay, fine. And remember that even in the tremors, trials, and tribulations of human life, you are a radiant soul who is growing ever more luminous through the wisdom, compassion, and strength distilled through those experiences. Look for the light beneath all phenomena, and you shall know the peace and love that is with all beings always. Okay. So the healing process says become present and connect with your heart in a restful, respectful manner. You may do this by lighting Oh, you may do this by lightly resting your hand over your heart and feeling for his presence beneath your hand. Not only not only as a marvelous physical organ, but also a, a spiritual temple of love. As you exhale, your awareness can drop from your head to your heart. As you inhale, your awareness can retreat a little more from the appearances of the outer world and feel pulled lovingly and gently toward the inner magnetic field of the heart. Within the heart, you can see, feel, and become aware of a beautiful eye. It is the eye of light, an eye of protection, an eye of wisdom, and non-judgment of clear vision and spiritual sight. This is not a cynical, no, this is not a clinical eye which assesses. It is a compassionate eye which sees the luminous inner reality of the soul and the sacred destiny of all beings. The trappings of opinion and preconceived ideas are like nets of fishermen. The ocean of love within the heart glides right through them. In the heart, there is wisdom and love. There is healing, there is truth, there is courage. This same love, wisdom is in the hearts of all beings. You can imagine it gently stirring, awakening, bringing peace, making the connection between all beings more consciously. We are not alone. We matter to each other at a deep spiritual level. I don't mean to mess up the message, but I don't feel like I am. But I just don't feel like that's true for all beings because... I don't know. I just witness a lot. Like you just witness, witness a lot. Like it's people who get up in the morning, in the middle of the night, with things they they want to do to kids and they want to do to the elderly and things they want to do. Oh, but it might still be true because it's saying those things are available to all beings, but you still have free will. Let me shut up and keep reading. Okay, we are not alone. I already said that. Partake of the sacred heart tonic of all embracing, all encompassing love. When you are ready to complete your healing process, slowly emerge by focusing on the sensations of the air or clothing upon your skin, then ground and hydrate yourself. You have completed the healing process. Lord, thanks for watching, y'all. Bye.